Thank you so much for coming over. It's Tasha and welcome to the first of a couple of altars that I have decided to challenge myself to do to create an altar that I think would pass off for someone who's in the broom closet or unable to be outright with their witchcraft. Not everyone is lucky enough to have an altar out in the open or to have one a uh, permanent one or it just you know so many people can't do that right so I just wanted to share a couple of ideas on how you could maybe have your own secret altar that people may think is just a decorative table this one I'm calling winged things and ocean <laughs> I guess and um it's kind of my nature nature altar or my nature table this I think would tell someone that I really obviously love the ocean where I live is very close to the ocean that I like colorful candles and fairies and angels and feathers like I don't I wouldn't look at this and go oh my god a witch lives here for sure I just wouldn't um, and hopefully you agree with me but what someone who's looking at this table doesn't know or understand is that these feathers represent the element air. They represent winged gods and goddesses. They represent the bird familiar. They represent so many things that no one needs to know about. This group of feathers here could even stand in as a statue for a god or goddess. We worship nature. So taking pieces of nature and using them as deity statues just makes sense to me. But to someone who doesn't know, it's just a jar of feathers. These little fairies here, just like little buddy fairies, but they could be hidden, again, goddess and god representations. They could represent you know, whoever you want. You can project anything onto these little statues. Also, the fairies could represent the earth because they're so connected to earth. So that could be your earth element. We have an angel here. Especially if you have Christian parents, they may really like the angel thing. Um, but to you, it could mean an angel. It could mean ancestors and ancestor worship. That could be your secret ancestor candle. The shells are a representation of water. I don't think anyone would look at those and go, oh, she's definitely a sea witch. However, when I look at them, I go, oh, she's definitely a sea witch. <laughs> you could have shells or whatever's around where you are. You know, if you live somewhere that has beautiful rocks or has gorgeous trees or foliage or anything like that, bring it inside and, and prop it up in just a decorative way. This is a little something I made recently. It's kind of my grandma craft that I did. And um, to me, this represents my witchcraft. This little globe here, the lighthouse is my god. And it's a little phallic symbol. The shells are my goddess. There's rocks in there and sand and a little crab. And when I look at this, it's magic to me. It's everything I love about magic. The wildness of the beach, the wind, the waves, the smell. And it's just, it's special and very, very witchy to me. But if someone looked at this, they wouldn't see that. And that's how you can hide your witchiness <laughs> in things that mean something to you. It doesn't have to be what an author tells you or a friend or whoever. Just use what is witchy to you. What makes you feel witchy in nature? And maybe you can bring it in and create something that is uh, reflective of your path, but someone else would just go, oh, they're into just the sea or they're into making little scenes. The candles obviously could represent fire. If you are a little bit sketched out about using candles in the color of the four elements, honestly, four tea lights will do the trick. You could even do four tea lights and two more for the goddess and god, or whatever deities you worship. So this is just the first one, and I'm going to do a little shuffling around, create the next one, and we'll talk about that. So I'll be back soon. Hello, 
<laughs> welcome for me it's been a whole like 15 minutes for you it's been like a whole one second <laughs> but this is the second altar idea that I came up with which is just kind of a pop culture these are the things I love altar again I walked into the room after making it and just thought Tasha what's your first impressions and to me would be this horror loving Sailor Moon loving Harry Potter loving <laughs> Nate Maver for Christmas loving person has decided to connect with their inner child or just likes to put some stuff on display. Lots of people have super cool, super fun collections of either characters from their childhood or favorite pop culture icons and um, you could totally use that as a way to disguise an altar. Everyone's stuff is different so some of these characters won't apply to you but I think it will definitely help start getting some ideas going. So I'm a huge Sailor Moon ner nerd and it's kind of the perfect fandom to be in if you're witchy because you have the planets, you have girl power, um, strong female role models and all of that good stuff with different personalities. So you could use your Sailor Mars to be representation of fire, Sailor Jupiter, and Venus can represent air. You've got Sailor Mercury for water. And then we've got Sailor Moon to represent water or earth. Um, just kind of some ideas. You also have the colors in the girls' uniforms. So you have your red over here to represent fire. Jupiter with your green for earth. Venus with your orangey yellow for air and then Mercury for your water. So you can have the four elements just there in complete plain sight and nobody is going to really think much of it. I have my Frankenstein in Werewolf. I have my Frankenstein here to again represent ancestors. That's an important part in my path and I thought that if I was in the broom closet I would also always want to find um, something to represent the dead. And for me, I thought Frankenstein would be a good fit. I know Jack and Sally are right there, but I think Frankenstein would be great because, first of all, it's a movie that I associate with my grandmother because she loves the old universal horror movies. So that connects to my lineage a little bit. Um, everyone in my family loves horror movies and spooky things. Um, I think it's genetic. <laughs> so it makes sense to me that um, when I look at him, I think of my family, I think of my past, so I can loop in my other ancestors. You can also look at the Frankenstein kind of myth of Frankenstein's monster coming back from the dead um, new life. So you can also look at Frankenstein's monster and go rebirth, a very popular kind of witchy way of looking at life and death. Then I have the Wolfman over here to represent my wild, sexy lover, the God. Um, when I think of the God, I think of this wild, masculine energy, this complete sexual energy. And the Wolfman, if you're familiar with these stories, is often a romantic tale. So I see him incorporating that lover or that god energy. So I'm going to use him to represent maybe Pan or Lucifer, like a wild kind of god, lusty. <laughs> I have Jack and Sally. So this is actually my wedding cake topper. Um, I had a bit of a, a little bit of a nightmare before Christmas kind of theme going on with my wedding with some things. And um, this was a wedding topper. So for me, it's an obvious symbol of love. It can represent love goddesses and gods. I've been working a little bit with Aphrodite and trying to get to know her. And this can give me Aphrodite vibes. It gives me love vibes, union, soulmates, you know, people that are just simply meant to be. Um, Nightmare Before Christmas, it's perfect for that for me. So that's a great representation of love. But anyone who knows me would be like, oh, Tasha's got her wedding cake topper out. No big deal. Um, but it's so much more to to me so well, you can find items that mean something to you that really you can incorporate so much more meaning in it um, like earlier 
I could take this and go, okay, this is going to be my statue for Aphrodite, my statue of love. And that's fine. And I'll incorporate that into that Nightmare Before Christmas cake topper. So you can incorporate your magic into anything that you want. That's the beauty of being a witch. Witchcraft is empowering. And it's here to say, like, you don't have to follow what a book says. You don't need a traditional altar to be a witch. You can literally hang out with Harry Potter and Sailor Moon and Universal Monsters and still be a witch and be just as powerful and just as witchy as someone who has a full room dedicated to their craft. I've got Dobby over here. Dobby, being a little elf, to me is the earth, the earth element. Also a reminder of daily practice and not being a servant to my path, but being diligent and making sure that I'm practicing. So I can put all of that into Dobby and faith into Dobby. And I love him. The one little tea light candle. There's so much you can do with that. That could be a spell. That could be your element candle. That could be your goddess candle. That could be your like kick ass self empowerment. Your amazing candle. Um, it's whatever you want. But to someone it's just a tea light. And we've got Harry Potter with the cactus. So honestly the reason this is here it's more for the cactus aspect more so than harry um but it's just kind of i felt like the plant or the potter went kind of with the potter <laughs> i made a little little pun there um <laughs> but the pot i thought would and a rhyme apparently sorry sorry i'm getting distracted and getting hyper um the potted plant would be a great representation of earth and fire because it's a cactus so it's another way you can just bring a house plant in, have a nice little plant on your table, and that could be so many things. That could be a fire god, that could be a fire goddess, that could be a war god, a war goddess. That could be someone to make you feel empowered and confident. You could look at that cactus and be like, you know what, I'm gonna be a prick today. Whatever makes you feel good, you can embody into that cactus, into that plant. Could also be a spell about resi resilience and strength and having self-esteem or having a harder shell, not letting people bother you. So there's so much that you can just kind of project on the all items. It's not even the items, it's the, what you put into them. So this is my pop culture little altar. I will see you again in a couple minutes. Hey guys, so we're back. <laughs> this time, I'm doing one for fellow spooky people out there who like to have you know, spooky decorations in their house. Or if you're a little bit of a goth or whatever, if you like spookiness like I do, then you probably have some of these things or similar things in your, in your room or in your house. Um, you can put all those things on a table and kind of create your own dark god, dark goddess, badass, death altar. Um, some of us, myself included, are attracted to darker deities. And if you're in a house that's a Christian household or a very conservative household or what have you, it may not be easy to just outright have some badass heavy metal death altar. <laughs> um, so this is kind of what I came up with. Now my skull, I find, has a bit of a witchy vibe because I put roses and the little Chinese lanterns on there. Um, but even a normal plastic skull or foam skull, Halloween decoration is what that is, would work really perfect as a representation of death. Yeah, I can see the goddess hell in this. I can see my own mortality in that. Um, Hades. There's just so much. Anubis. Um, so many of the darker gods and goddesses that you could simply use a skull to represent. If you're already a little bit spooky and live in that spooky lifestyle, I don't think parents would question having a couple items together that um, just kind of looks like a spooky table. I did push it a little with this one because I've got the incense going. But incense, um, where I live <clears throat> in Canada, which is a very liberal country, 
Um, incense is very common just to have in your house as a way to make it smell good and basically hide your weeds, I think. So, <laughs> um, I don't know. Some parents may question incense or some, you know, people that you live with, um, spouses, whatever, um, may question that, but I think most people wouldn't and it's in a cool little skull thing. And if you're already into skulls and all that good stuff, I don't think anyone would be shocked. What they don't know is that you're making offerings to, um, hopefully not burning down your table like I might be, but making offerings to your gods. This could be an offering to the dead. This could be something that you light every day for a couple of minutes just to say thank you to, to whoever it is that you believe in or to your ancestors or just to get good vibes going for yourself. This is a little kitchen trivet that I have in my kitchen. Um, I know I'm kind of pushing it with this altar, but... Um, I think you could, if you're already into that stuff, like it's just kind of a decorative thing that you could have for for your for your table here. The water, I would just say, oh geez, I forgot my glass of water there. What was I doing? I'm being lazy. But really, that's an offering to the dead. The dead are known to be thirsty, so offering them water is a great way to connect with your ancestors, connect with death spirits or death gods and be heavy metal as fuck by just having a glass of water on a table. <laughs> so it's something that you could maybe do and it's easy. It's easy to go get a glass of water and just plop it down somewhere. But to you, it's so much more than that. But to someone else, it could just be a glass of water. And again, that magical candle that you could honestly use for anything. And I took the altar cloth off because you don't need an altar cloth. The altar cloth does not make the witch. So you don't need that stuff, you really don't. Use what you have, use what's yours, and just put it in a fashion that feels magical to you and imbue it, is that a word? Imbue, I feel like it is, I'm gonna use it. If not, I just made a word. Um, infuse, let's use that word that I know is real. Infuse those items with your awesome magical self. That thing, that thing that makes you a witch is unseen. It's not the stuff on a table, it's not how it's arranged, whether you think it's aesthetically pleasing or not, um, it's what you put into it. You can even use Christian items, like above I have my rosaries there that I use for witchy things, um, much to the disdain of the Christians that have been leaving comments on my, my videos, but um, I put witchy stuff into that. So you could even do use religious items that could be religious to the people in your home but secretly they're witchy to you. So you are the witch. You are the magic. You, the person watching this video right now, you are the witch. Not the things that you have in your house. Not the things you can buy or make or create or whatever. It's you. So you can make anything witchy just by being there and by being yourself. So hopefully some of this helped. I don't know. I could be totally out of touch too. So let me know. Um, thanks so much for watching and hanging out with me and happy altar crafting. Bye.